Hello everyone, today I want to talk to you about the integrating factor method. This is a method you can use to solve differential equations that look like this. You have a first order derivative plus a function of x multiplying y, and on the right hand side of the equation you have a function of x which we just call q. Now the integrating factor method is a little strange at first because it looks like it comes out of thin air, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what's the reasoning behind it, okay? So let's begin. So to use this method, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by a common factor or function of x, and this function has to satisfy a very important property. So let me show you. We're going to say that, um, let's say, I'm going to use the letter k for our integrated factor. Let k be a function of x such that And here's a property that k must satisfy. The derivative with respect to x of k times y, of the quantity k times y, must be equal to k times q of x, okay? This is a very important property. And you may wonder, okay, why do we care about this equation and why we want to find a k such that this equation is true, okay? And it looks like I just pulled this out of thin air. Let me show you, let me show you why. If you integrate both sides of this equation with respect to x, what do you get? So I'm going to write it entirely, I'm going to write the entire thing. So let's say we integrate um, d dx of k times y with respect to x, right? Now, that's the left-hand side of the equation. Now, let's do the right-hand side. You want to integrate k times q of x dx. Now, what happens on this side? Well, we know dx and dx are going to cancel out. And in the end, you're just going to get the integral of d times k, uh, d times k times y. Well, not d times k, but d of k y, you know what I mean. And on the right-hand side, we have k q of x dx. So this is what we have now. Now you can continue rewriting this like this. You can say k times y. Remember the goal of differential equation is to, well not the goal of differential equation, but when you're solving a differential equation your goal is to find y, okay? And something wonderful happens here. Notice that on the left hand side of the equation we have y and if we divide both sides of this equation by y, by k, I'm sorry, by the integrating factor k, you can move k to the right hand side of the equation by dividing, and then you have an expression, you have a formula for y. Okay? So no, notice, notice how useful this is. If you want to find y, the only thing you need is you need the function q, which is the right hand side of the differential equation, times k, and then you integrate that quantity and you divide by k, okay? The goal of making this equation and saying that we want to find a k such that this is true, the goal of doing that is so that we can make this equation true, okay? Now, the only thing we need to do to find y at this point is to find k, okay? Because we already know q. q is a non-known -fun function. And if we can find k, the integrating factor, such that this equation is true, then we can solve for y. So now let's find k. So I'm going to make some separation here. Now our goal is going to be to find k, our integrating factor, okay? Now this equation looks promising, we can do something with it. By using the product rule we can say the following, we can say dk dx times y plus, now we have, D, now we have k dy dx, this is going to be equal to the right hand side of the equation. Now, how can we get the right hand side of the equation? Well, notice we could just multiply both sides of that equation of our differential equation by k, and then we would get kqx, okay? So let me show you this. Um, if we multiply, I'm gonna go here. We could multiply both sides of this equation by k. So we would have k times dy dx. We would have a k here. And then we would also have a k here, right? You can multiply both sides of the equation by your integrating factor, and then you get k times q is equal to the left-hand side. And that's what we're going to write here. So we're going to say 
this, which is equal to this derivative, is going to be equal to k times uh, dy dx plus k times d of x times y, and that's it. Now, notice a few things. There are some things we can cancel out. For instance, we have k dy dx and k dy dx. These two, oops, these two, we can get rid of them. And then we get um, dk dy dx times y is equal to k times p of x times y. We have y's on both sides, we can cancel them out. And we're going to have dk dx is equal to k times p of x. Now, if you know separation of variables, you can solve this very easily. You can solve for k, okay? So let's do that now. We can do dk divided by k is equal to p of x dx. So I just move dx to the right hand side by multiplying. And now we're going to integrate both sides of this equation. And we're going to get that ln of the absolute value of k is going to be equal to the integral of p of x dx. And now, if you want to find your integrating factor, well, you can just exponentiate both sides. And you're going to get that e to the integral of p of x dx is equal to k. Okay? Notice how wonderful this is. p of x is a known function. That is something that our differential equation will give us. And that means that this is something you can calculate. Which means that k is something you can find. And once you have k, you can throw it into this equation and you have solved for y, okay? That is how the method of integrating factor, of the integrating factor works. Now let's solve a very simple example. Let's say we have this differential equation. Notice p of x is going to be equal to 2x and q of x equals x squared. Now let's use the method of the integrating factor to solve this. We're going to say there is some k such that this equation is true. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by k first, and we're going to have k times dy dx plus 2k x times y plus equals, my bad, k times x squared. Now, we're going to differentiate this because, remember, we want to differentiate this so that we can let it be equal. We can let, we can let the left-hand side be equal to this. So let's say now I'm going to differentiate this the property that describes your integrated factor. So we have dk dx times y plus k dy dx. This is the left-hand side, and we know the left-hand side is equal to k times q of x, which in this case we know q of x, k times q of x, sorry, k times q of x is going to be k times x squared. So this is k times x squared. Great. And now we don't really care about k x squared. What we care about is the left hand side because then we can cancel out a few things. So I'm actually gonna, oh uh, yeah, let me continue here. I'm gonna say this is k dy dx plus 2k x times y. Now we can cancel out this term with this one. And we have dk dxy, 2kxy. We can divide by y on both sides. So this y and this y, they cancel out as well. And in the end, we would get dk dx is going to be equal to, so this y one way is this one. And we have 2kx. Okay? Great. And now we want to solve for k because k is our integrating factor. So let's solve for k. I'm going to continue up here. So we have dk divided by k. We want to integrate that. This is just separation of variables. And then 2 of x. 2 times x, sorry. 2x dx. Now if we integrate this, we have ln of the absolute value of k. Uh, and this is equal to x squared plus c. We have a constant there. 
Now, typically with the constant, we let it equal to zero because we're gonna integrate a second time and we can take care of all the constants when we integrate a second time. But I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave this constant just so that you're, you, you don't, you know, you don't think it's confusing or you're not concerned about, well, what happened with that with the constant. So I'm gonna leave it there, but know that typically we just let this be equal to zero, okay? Uh, so we exponentiate both sides of the equation. We exponentiate the entire thing, and we have that k, our integrated factor, is gonna be x squared, oh, and the constant, let's say, there would be like an a here, but again, we let this be equal to zero, so if you have e to a zero, that's one. So technically, you could put a constant there if you want, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, it matters in the end. In the second integration, it does matter, but not here. So now we have our integrating factor. Now remember the trick we did with this. Remember the reason we want our integrating factor to satisfy this property is so that we can do the following. We can say that the integral with respect to x of the quantity ky dx. If we integrate both sides of this equation, we want to be able to solve for y very easily. So q of x in this equation is going to be x squared, right? Because we have k, we have, this is the form we have. So x squared is equal to q. So we have x squared here, dx. Great. Now we can rewrite this integrand as, because we are, now we have an explicit expression for k, x squared, so this is the same as having x squared times x squared, okay? Now, let's, I'm gonna continue down here. This integral, we know that it's gonna be k times y. And this integral that is x to the fourth power, that should be x to the fifth power, divided by five, and then we have a constant of integration c, okay? And now to solve for y, we can just divide both sides of the equation by k. So we have x squared, oh sorry, not x squared, x to the fifth power divided by k, which is x squared, here, k equals x squared. So we have x squared, and then times five, and now we have plus c, and you gotta be careful when you divide by k, k will also divide c. So k is not absorbed by c. That is a common problem and a common, a common way to screw up these problems. If you just say, oh, c divided by k, that's just a constant. No, it's not a constant. It is c divided by your integrating factor, which in this case is x squared, a function of x, not a constant. And finally, we have our final answer. We have y is equal to x to the third power divided by five plus c squared, c divided by x squared, okay? So this is how you can solve integrals using the integrating factor method. As you can see, basically, you're just letting this equation be true and you find a k such that this is true. And then you do this trick. You say that if you integrate both sides of the equation, I can solve y by dividing by k on both sides. That is, I think, the core logic behind this method. So I hope you, you found this useful. I hope uh, you were able to learn something and I hope to see you in my following video. Bye.